Cornelius Mann is now facing charges and not accused of using a mix of AI, made songs, and fake accounts just to be able to get millions of dollars for streaming services. The crime itself sounds unique, but experts say this likely isn't the only case out there. So these songs played on these reportedly fraudulent accounts were likely ones that you've never heard of. Queen City News anchor Derek Dallinger is here to explain why, and Derek, the feds say all of this was to get around anything that might be flagged by the streamers, right? Uh, yes, in fact, the feds say that those fraudulent accounts, sometimes around 1,000 and all, sometimes as much as 10,000, they would listen to these AI songs that this man, this suspect, Michael Smith, reportedly had the rights to. Not only is this all against the terms of service, it's also considered fraud as well. It's also considered wire fraud and money laundering, which is also what the charges also face. Out of fact, only WBTV was there as FBI agents raided a Cornelius man's home. He's a musician now facing serious charges, accused of using AI to create and stream music and illegally collect more than $10 million in royalties. Michael Smith is charged with wire fraud conspiracy, wire fraud, and money laundering conspiracy. We caught word of this morning's FBI raid at the musician's home this morning. Our Erica Lunsford was there. She's live here at the Cornelius musician's home. Eric, I'm sure these neighbors were just stunned to see this unfolding. There. Siobhan, neighbors I spoke to today off camera told me they knew of Michael Smith just as a neighbor just seeing around the neighborhood and they couldn't understand why he was being escorted out of his home today with handcuffs. Now here's a look at what we saw a little bit earlier today when we got here. FBI agents were in the driveway of Smith's home on Wildair Drive. They appeared to be searching through the home and again Smith is accused of using automated programs to stream AI generated songs billions of times. Documents state that hundreds of thousands of AI generated songs were streamed by bot accounts billions of times which allowed him to fraudulently obtain more than 10 million dollars in royalties. The indictment alleges at a certain point from about 2017 up to and including 2024 Smith estimated that he could use the bot accounts to generate over 661,000 streams a day yielding annual royalties of over a million dollars. Now, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office, Smith repeatedly lied to the streaming platforms when he used false names and other information to create the bot accounts when he agreed to abide by the terms and conditions that prohibited streaming manipulations. Now, with all of the charges that Smith is facing, he could see up to 60 years in prison. I like this guy. I like this guy. Off the bat, I gotta say, I like this guy. This guy should receive the highest honor in the land and a Grammy Award to boot for his exemplary music business practice. Michael Smith. That's right. Before we get into that, I just gotta say, Lord, please. Have sympathy and forgive my cool, young history. So some of you music biz nerds and a few people lurking around in the dark corners of the internet may have recently heard about the scandal or the biggest federal case in history concerning music streaming companies, which, which really shouldn't be, and we'll get into that in a minute. That concerns a guy called, the most generic name you could find, Michael Smith next to John Doe that is. So what did Michael Smith do? Well technically he didn't do anything that record companies don't do and he didn't do anything that radio stations don't do and he didn't even do anything that major and independent artists don't do. What's the problem? What did he do? Ah, all right let, let's get into that right so the poor Michael young history Michael Smith himself made the critical sin of cutting out the middleman. That is what he did wrong, all right? So, let me tell you a little bit about the story. I'm just gonna give you a surface view. If you wanna go check out the full story, there's some articles here and then there's a video there, right? So this dude, Michael Smith, basically decided to himself, I've seen what the music industry is doing and I see what the Swedish streaming giant Spotify is doing and Apple Music and Tidal and Amazon and Deezer and you name them, right? What they are doing is essentially producing money out of nowhere, right? But where is the money really coming from? Ah, that's the important part. The money is coming from the advertisers, right? So he's taken note of what these streaming companies are doing. And he said to himself, hmm, I'm smart enough to make a buck of this because I have two brain cells to rub together. So what has he done? He's gone and he's was some AI music produced, which he didn't have to do, which was which was one of the more intelligent things I might say he did. He got some AI songs produced, but a bunch of them through this company, right? And he put them all on this streaming platform and he put them under different, um, I was gonna say pseudonyms. He put them under different names, right? And there's these AI generated songs, right? Just like AI generated YouTube videos. Look at that, some of you, yeah? And he put them on these streaming platforms. And then here's the part where you could consider it to be a little bit criminal activity, which is also the most interesting part, like the part we want to know more about, right? He then bought a bunch of emails on the internet, about a thousand they said, all right? Email addresses to open new accounts on all these streaming platforms. Then he set up bots to stream these songs every single day, right? Now, apparently this went down around 2016, 2017, right? I'm not quite sure the actual dates of it. The business was the business then too, which we'll get, in. I can say which we'll get into. As you can see, I'm quite excited about this, which I shouldn't be, right? But I'm excited about this for all the right reasons because people have seemed once again to forget history and how the music business was born and functions to this day, right? So, he, he bought these accounts, made these accounts, 
got this AI music, uploaded the AI music and started to stream it. Now, this guy thought he'd be a little bit clever, more clever than your average SoundCloud rapper, more clever than Drake and Snoop Dogg even, and he would spread out his music through various different artist names and only stream them a certain amount so he stayed under the radar for a time. Now, you might be wondering, well, since he stayed under the radar, how the fuck did he get caught? Mm, that is the big question, isn't it? That is the big question. See, the thing is, your boy Michael Young History didn't do anything different to anybody else. What your boy Michael Young History is, is the fool guy, right? He is the example to scare you, right? Now, I know you might be, well, why, why should that scare me? Well, there's a lot of things going on here, right? For one, you've got your AI music propaganda in there, right? To make artists and creators scared. Well, we should be scared of AI, AI is taking our job. No, it's fucking not, right? 90% of you are mediocre and the other 10% of you are scammers, right? That is the music industry. That is the art industry. That's the movie industry. If you don't know, get to know. Well, that Biggie said, now nah, you know. But Lord forgive Michael Young history, right? When he say sympathy, that's Lupe Fiasco, of course. And that's someone you could go ask about music business practices, right? If you want to know about some real shit, ask Lupe about music industry practices. Anyway. Personal story segment tonight on June 7th, Chicago rapper Lupe Fiasco, who's promoting an album called President Obama, a terrorist. To put it into context, um, I was asked about a song that I did called Words I Never Said, which addresses terrorism. So the statement that I made, which was, I believe that the biggest terrorist, uh, Obama, and the United States of America, and its foreign policy, that was what the whole, you know, context of everything was. And it was really just an expression of me trying to, I guess, understand critically, you know, the society. You know, President Obama is not a terrorist. He's trying to do what he believes is the right thing to do. Uh, the United States is not a bad nation, it's a noble nation. We're trying to defend ourselves against people who killed us on 9 11. Cool. And, and then you go out there and you talk to a lot of younger people, and this is what gets me. The York okay. Okay. You're not exactly political science PhDs, okay? They're impressionable well, I, don't, I don't think that that matters. I don't think you need no, that. They listen to you, PhDs, Mr. Jacob. To understand, they listen to, to you. understand politics. To understand politics, I don't think you necessarily need that. And I don't think that politics are as complex as people like to make them seem or out to be. Richard Nixon said that, you know, if you they reduced fear by reducing the causes of fear. And in, in that same interview, which I spoke about, you know, calling Obama terrorist and every president before and after him a terrorist, right, is that if you're going to fight terrorism, right, yeah. true terrorism, you know, weaponize fear. In defense of ourselves, we're fighting, actively fighting something else. But if you're going to fight terrorism, to me, you fight the root causes. Patience for that. Yeah. That's made things more difficult for him. But through that difficulty, you come out the other side um, with great opportunities. It's funky when you see the people who leave you alone, but the people you attract because you're honest and you speak what you say are way more powerful and have way more influence than the people who left you alone. Mm -hmm. And True. when you see dynamics like that, you just like, so why would I bite my tongue? You know? Well, because I think people respect, they may not like your words, but they respect the intellect and where it's coming from. And I also think that, and one thing I've learned is that when you have uh, a malicious intent, people can tell. When mm -hmm. you're just saying, listen, here's how I'm affected by whatever's going on around me or the, or the current events of today, um, and you're transparent and honest, and, and people know that you want to better. You want to better people. You mm -hmm. want, you know what I mean? They see that. So I think what you're experiencing right now is people recognizing in you that you are a creative person who wants to make things better for as many people as you can, mm -hmm. and your intellect is high, so they are going to engage with you at a certain level. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people don't understand that concept right like um you know there are politics at play but people want to know that you know what the fuck you're doing now right. and they want to know that you know what you're saying and the impact of what you're saying right. so michael smith if that's his name didn't do anything wrong right do you know what he done wrong is he got caught now the thing is how the fuck did he get caught it's something that we've seen a lot. We've seen people set up systems to do this in a more manual way, to, to make money from, in essence, the advertising revenue. We see it on YouTube, we see it through Google Ads. Derek Ellington is a digital forensics examiner and certified fraud examiner. We talked with him about the case involving Smith. Federal authorities say Smith used a mix of bots, fraudulent accounts, and AI-generated songs to make money from streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music, among others. The indictment against him indicates the bots were part of those fraudulent accounts and would make the clicks for the AI songs. And prosecutors say there were hundreds of thousands of songs, all of it eventually resulting in money for Smith. What makes this case so unique is AI tools allowed him to do this at an exponential level that could not have been done before manually. The Fed state was estimated at around $1.2 million a year year for about seven years. The new tools that have come along uh, that have allowed people to now create music, they can exploit the business model that has been there for a long, long time. Dr. Darren Hodges is with Appalachian State. He says programs like this are easy to make, but likely not a good idea. However, there are increasing advances in tech that are making it that much harder to track. And I think a lot of people believe that things like this shouldn't be able to happen because you're being monitored all the time, but in reality, uh, it's really bot on bot here. Federal authorities noted that it's one thing if all those accounts were playing just a handful of songs. It would have been easier to track. Smith is accused of spreading it out to make it look inconspicuous. But there's one thing that our experts say he allegedly did that made it easy for authorities to make an arrest. Call it what it was. He got greedy. And, you know, one of the things we see with criminals is over time, the more they steal, sort of the more uh, more arrogant, if you will, the more greedy they get. And our experts actually tell us if this wasn't done on such a large scale, he probably likely would have gotten away with it. Now, Smith is facing three separate charges conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud, as well as money laundering. There are a number of other co conspirators that are involved here as well, at least according to the indictment. There's no clear word on the charges that they are facing, though. By the way, he's being charged out of the Southern District of New York, and there's no indication yet on any extradition at least so far from what we've seen. Some of you may not know this, right? I understand how this works in modern times. So what you get is a bunch of distributors, digital distributors who send your song or your art, your album, your music video to various platforms. And they play like a, a middleman to the customer. You know, like in Layer Cake, you know, like, oh, I'm good business side is being a good middleman, right? Basically, right? The distributor is the middleman to the streaming platform, which is the middleman to you, the consumer, right? So 
you send your music to the digital distributor and they send your music to all the different platforms whichever they can get agreements with so they got agreements with spotify they got agreements with itunes they got agreements with Deezer, amazon music tidal music and they send them there all right that's how your average soundcloud rapper could get on any stream right that's how your big record label do do it too my assessment is the, the way that michael smith got caught is through his distributors his distributors clearly analyzed his stream revenue right? and I was like all right let's look at this because clearly on their books they'll see they're paying almost three million dollars right to this dude so they want to know what artist they probably was thinking what artist is generating this kind of money so we can finagle and get our little cut off of it right we could maybe do a label deal maybe do a branding deal and they probably looked into Michael Smith and I was like oh he's this name that name this name that name so the chances are Michael Smith got caught because the labels and the distributors were probably looking at a way to finesse some money off of the Michael Smith, the artist who controls all of these pseudonyms. I, I don't even know if pseudonym is the right word, but all of these fake artists, right, with all of these songs, they were probably looking at it to see, well, we got big amounts of payments going out to this person or these these people let's have a look and see if we can either reach out to them and get them to work with us or you know use his celebrity or generate because it's all, all of it is fake right do you think there's anybody in the world that legitimately has a billion streams from humans that listen to the whole damn song no that's that's all bullshit that's inflation that's that's money laundering right now you if you want to do a little bit of digging you can find this out for yourself i'm not quite sure which record companies are involved with this so forgive me if i um if i if i falsely charge you with this right but i think i feel like it's warner um at lot whatever the dudes are see i just call out water water right but they're one of the biggest like perpetuators of this kind of shit they know it too right i i, I can't wait to like to like a a big Marcus Garvey style storm a hurricane just sweeps through the music industry and particularly in Britain and cleans up all of this bullshit right because they know it we know it the public know it is bullshit right but this is the thing these big companies right have a stake in um companies like Spotify now there's a certain fund allocated to Spotify to make sure their artists get the the the, the top of the the cream of the crop or at least appear to be right so whenever there's a curated playlist and stuff like that the label funnels the artist through that playlist to you right because you think spotify is just giving you a mix because they know what you like no spotify is telling you what to like right but anyway that's another conversation right so the reason michael smith didn't actually do anything wrong because all he did is the same thing that everyone else is doing but he just did it on his own right and in a clever way now they're using him as an example to scare you to stop you from doing what they're doing too now if i was you i wouldn't take this as a warning i would take this as a sign of fear from them they can't actually stop you from doing this all right that is the that's what's underneath the bottom of this now mike probably had what is called a streaming farm now there's many ways to do that right you can set up like a, a wall of phones that all just play the same videos or the same songs or one after the other you can um outsource it to places like india philippines turkey like all of these kinds of things or you could just outsource it to a, a company in london somewhere and they'll just use vpns and dns to appear like they're different places in the world right and you you get your target audience it builds the algorithm right that's why you guys got watch what you watch and watch what you listen to because your algorithm is dictating who you are to you right and you don't even realize it you get manipulated anyway anyway you don't want to hear no paranoia talk from a guy dressed in black with a black hat all right no you don't want to hear that you want to hear facts okay so what michael done is just his own version of payola right what is payola? Payola is briefly the practice of major record labels paying radio stations or radio broadcasters to play their artist songs. It's been illegal for a long time and it's still happening all the time. Payola is the reason that you won't hear a lot of undiscovered music on commercial radio, especially in the United States. You'll hear the same 10 artists day in, day out. Record companies wanted a return on that investment, but with so many records competing for airtime on radio stations across the country, getting their artists heard was anything but a guarantee. Well, it was something brand new, and when you have something new, a lot of, a lot of times the rules haven't been established yet. And so it was like the wild, wild west. In this wild, wild west, the disc jockey was the sheriff, having complete control over when and how many times a single was played. At a time when radio airplay was the number one way for labels to give their music exposure, DJs wielded remarkable power. But most record companies weren't willing to sit idly by and hope that a DJ might play their song. I don't think many disc jockeys knowingly played a bad record because they had ratings back then, but there were shades of it, and, and obviously there was influence. That influence had a name, and it was Payola. Payola in our business was a record company or an artist coming in saying, hey, I got a new record coming out, here's 150 bucks. My definition of Payola is getting payment for putting something on the air. It can be records, it could be talking about a restaurant, it could be without proper att attribution on the air. Payola 
was a way of getting something that you wanted. And what the record companies wanted was lots of airtime. To get it, they padded DJ's pockets with cash or other incentives. Some reported receiving thousands of dollars. And up until that point, it really wasn't illegal, as best that I recall. Not only was it not illegal, but it wasn't necessarily new. Payola had existed since the beginning of radio in some form or another, though certainly not on the scale that it grew to in the 1950s, becoming so prevalent that it eventually caught the attention of the United States Congress. On the one hand, Alan Freed's massive popularity allowed him to get away with murder. He normalized black artists on the radio when many other stations would only play cover versions by white bands. Now, there's no way to guarantee it. But if someone were uh, able to determine what records were to be played and influence the likes and dislikes of the potential buyers, that person would be in a very powerful position in the industry. In fact, as radio became the dominant way Americans discovered new music, hundreds of DJs around the country found themselves in a similar position of power. Naturally, the record labels did everything they could to exploit this. When they visited the stations to pitch their new releases, the promoters brought jewelry, watches, silk shirts, and expensive luggage. There would be lavish parties with female entertainment, fully paid vacations, TV sets delivered to the home. Others yet simply paid cash, weekly payments of maybe $100, guaranteeing a certain number of spins. Or, as in the case of Alan Freed and Chuck Berry, a DJ might be given partial songwriting credit, with the understanding that they now play the record more frequently. Scummy? Definitely. The idea that, on your ride home from work, you might be hearing Song A, not because it's truly the best song, but just because it paid more than Song B. Well, that did not sit right with the American public. And soon, their anger would boil over. In the late 50s, an investigation by the U.S. Congress revealed widespread fixing of game shows by producers. Riding their wave of success, the Congressional Committee announced a new probe into another area of public intrigue, the alleged bribing of radio DJs. Unlike the payola scandals of the past, the government was now actually interested because it involved the federally regulated radio airwaves. Radio stations are required to follow all sorts of guidelines, one of those being that paid sponsorships must be mentioned on the air. That DJ would need to disclose that you're a sponsor of their show. Otherwise, it's considered deceptive to the audience. The same goes for music. A radio station was technically allowed to accept payment in exchange for airplay, but they would need to say something like, the following song is from our sponsor, Chess Records. Of course, few DJs, if any, actually did this, since they'd be admitting to their bosses that they took an under-the-table payment and probably get fired. came to the big DM, I don't know if it's the first time, mm -hmm. but you were in between albums. Okay. You already had dropped down serious, right. and I think you had just did the deal. No, I don't think you did the deal in Atlanta yet. Okay. And you had 24s on white label. Right. And you came to the station like 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, it was you and C-Rod. Okay. And me playing 24s. Right. I, you know, without consulting the program director, that was a big. Deal. That was considered shocking. That was a big. Deal. You know, that's not shocking. I'm like, yo, I mean, you you play music. I absolutely. Trying to control the, the 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 DJ's ability to break music when that's what the DJ is supposed to be in place for. Um, well, that was back in the day when they was really taking money to play rap. <laughs> so being that you didn't have a label situation, they were like, what is you playing that for? Yeah. You know. So now that you've seen that video, Payola was basically the practice the music business as we know it today is founded on. It's pay to play, right? And it went from being, I'm going to give you cash to play this record to I'm going to put you on a holiday, right? I'm, I might play, pay your mortgage this month. If you're on drugs, I'll get you some free drugs. If you are addicted to sex, I'll get you some women or some men or God forbid, some children, you know? That is what Payola is, right? And they think it started in the 50s. It did not, right? Payola has existed since music was written, right? And formulated in notes. We pay to have this music printed. You think Mozart was the top don because we want you to think Mozart was the top. Just, I know it sounds like I'm like dragging you into a rabbit hole of the matrix here. Like you think this is real, but it's not right. But it, it's like that. Every industry is like that. So if you just assume that humans are going to be humans and no matter what venture they get into, you leave space to interpret those gray areas the way they're supposed to be interpreted, right? So anyway, the practice of payola they thought stopped in the 50s, right? And then they had a big boom of it again in 2005, but it never stopped, right? That's why when you turn on the radio and you hear nothing but mediocre, which is another point I gotta ask you guys, right? Now, don't look at me as racist or anything like that, but don't you think all of the quote unquote best pop stars are ultimately very mediocre and cannot sing? right do you do not realize there's a reason for that when you go to your job they don't want you to be the best worker because you make the other workers look bad so everyone needs to lower their standards so we can get more work done right you, you get it right so that is why the industry is like that but radio never stopped getting payola record companies never stopped doing payola so here's an example of this right what michael smith has done with his bots is the same thing as what record companies and shop owners used to do back in the day right so a shop, you'll have your mum and pop shop of records, right? Back in the day, they, they would actually order the records from the record company or the record company would give you the records on consignment, which basically means you just let us know how many you sell and what you don't sell, you return, right? It's called sell or return, right? Some places still do this. What would happen is they would fudge the numbers. So they'll give you all of these records, then they'll send in their own people to come and buy those records. And then when you buy those records, the, the shop reports that back to whatever governing body is in your country and they report that to the charts right and then you get to tell the charts and, and you get to tell your tax man or whoever does your accounting we sold this much when we really sold this much right and then you, you scrape some off the top right this is how it's always been done so what michael smith has done 
with bots is the same thing as that. He sent in his own people to buy his records, right? Which is what Drake has to do, which is what Kendrick has to do, which is what Snoop Dogg has to do, which is what Taylor Swift has to do, right? They want they may not have to do it themselves, but the people who who run their business, the people that run the business of the artist, so Taylor Swift is a business, and people work at Taylor Swift Incorporated, right? So those people have to do all of that dirty work so Taylor Swift can remain in the spotlight and keep making them money, right? So, why I say Michael Smith didn't do anything wrong because he does the same thing. I'm gonna just use the Taylor Swift as an example because he does the same thing as Taylor Swift. But the only problem is Michael Smith doesn't wanna be Taylor Swift. He just wants to be an anonymous guy making his fucking bread from his money and just leave me the fuck alone, right? You, you don't want me to walk down the street and pretend I'm famous like these idiots. I just wanna do what I wanna do. That's why they have to make an example of someone like Michael Smith smith because michael smith is a normal guy like you right he figured out how they run the system and he took it and he's like all right that's how you get in it all right i'll watch me get it right better than you right that's exactly what has happened here so as lupe once said lord please have sympathy and forgive michael young history all right the music business as it stands i like to call it the art of sniffing farts all right you know you're in rooms with people that are dickheads. They lack talent, they lack creativity, but you know what they know how to do is make money. You know what makes money? Charisma. But you know what also ruins the world? People that are bad with charisma. Do, do we need to look at Nazi propaganda just to show you how a guy with charisma can rise to a certain standard and cause problems for the world, right? Well, behind closed doors, every business is faced by those people with charisma but it's a lot of mediocre low-level bad-minded to some extent seedy people behind it right the music mafia isn't something that just sprang into existence in america the mafia saw the same thing that michael smith saw he saw right he saw they saw right we got these um we got these black guys making rock and roll and coming up with jazz and shit in these blues clubs but we want to make some money off this right so this is what we're going to do we're gonna say i'm gonna sign you there um jimmy right and i'm gonna produce your records i'm gonna pay for your studio time i'm gonna make sure you got all the drugs and all the women you need to produce your music right but you know what's gonna happen you're gonna put my name on the writing credit right and then i'm gonna make sure the record record labels and uh, the radio stations play your record and every time they play your record i'm gonna collect the money at one of my shops with one of my people that buy the record right so i get a cut from the records rights right this has always been how it's been this is what a rec a record company is a middleman is a racketeer on artist right it's a way to farm talent and racketeer it's a racketeer it's like it's a stick up it's like bruv what you want to come in this club this is my club right you got to pay me to come in the club and when you come in the club you got to buy my drinks and then when you finish at the end of the night you got to catch my taxi home right and then when you think you're going home with your girl no she's my girl so when you pay her to get a little bit of something something i'm getting a cut of that too right that is what a record label is that's why people say artists are just hoes they're just they're getting pimped down and hold out all right do you understand it now so michael smith was his own pimp and his own hoe but what made michael smith's case more interesting is that he used ai to do it right now apparently michael smith also produced some of his own records too which 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 is what lets you know this is how the shit is run all right and finally we come to oligarchy as aristotle notes the poor and the rich fight with each other and whichever side wins doesn't set up a fair or popular government instead they see political power as their prize for winning and one side sets up democracy while the other sets up an oligarchy remember aristocracy is ruled by the aristos or the best oligarchy on the other hand is a perversion of this ideal in an oligarchy focus shifts from the welfare of the community to the interests of the rulers themselves it's no longer about who is most capable or most dedicated to the common good but about who has the most money or property in aristocracy leaders are chosen based on their ability to govern well and their commitment to the public interest in oligarchy the path to power is paved with gold and the purpose of rule becomes the preservation and expansion of the ruler's wealth and influence this transfer doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process from usually polity, democracy, or aristocracy, and often subtle at first. Perhaps wealth starts as just one factor among many in selecting leaders, but over time, it becomes the dominant or even sole criterion. Or maybe virtuous leaders slowly begin to prioritize their own interests over those of the community. Aristotle noted that oligarchies, like tyrannies, are forms of government where power is used to benefit those in control rather than the broader community. So both systems are self-serving, but while tyranny is ruled by one person and his close circle, an oligarchy is ruled by a few more individuals. But more importantly, tyrants often rely on military force, whereas oligarchs first and foremost gain and maintain their power through their wealth. This is sometimes written into the law, but often it's just based on informal influence, which leads to laws and policies that favor the wealthy. The main point is that power is 
kept within the wealthy few, either through high property qualifications for holding office or by making the process of running for office too expensive for most people. This financial control allows them to operate within existing legal and political systems, manipulating these systems to suit their needs. This gives oligarchies an appearance of legitimacy, making them seem more stable than tyrannies, but Aristotle still considered them unstable at their core. Oligarchs are skilled at using their political power to protect and grow their wealth. They might pass laws that give them lucrative government contracts, protect business monopolies, or create regulations that limit competition. These tactics can sometimes lead to supreme oligarchy, where the wealthy have unchecked power and ignore any appearance of cultural or constitutional limits. In these cases, decisions are made solely for the benefit of the ruling elite rather than for the good of society. Let's just put it like this. Nobody in the world has ever done a billion pounds worth of work, but people have a billion pounds, right? Nobody has ever listened to anything a billion times, right? Think about a three minute song being played a billion times. That was probably played half a second by, by however many masses you want to break down that fraction into, right? And majority of them were bots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bots who had bosses <laughs> anyways right so uh, the michael smith story is just is just another layer in the fuckery that is the society we live in now you need you need right now people might say i'm bitter might say i'm biased but we're gonna change the world and clean it up and get rid of all of these fuckers eventually right you need to stop listening to the radio you need to stop streaming what you've been told to stream and you need to go and find your own taste and your own fucking likes in life and stop kowtowing to mediocre people because you're only allowing them to produce more mediocrity right and then you get end up in michael judge's idiocracy eventually and you'll be watering your grasp with gatorade ask yourself what the fuck happened how did we end up here you did it right on that note right Let's have some more theories from the underground, right? I don't know if that's like, I don't know, that's more of a Nietzsche kind of reference, right? Never mind that, right? But if advertising dollars determine what can and what can't be said, what can and what can't be played, you have to ask yourself how much creativity is allowed to be actually creative right in terms of the music industry for years we've allowed people who don't do anything creative to critique people that do people that know how to sell things and make money know that processes rule the roost what does that mean right if i can keep selling ice cream in the flavor of vanilla why in the hell would i ever invest in this new flavor I want you to get your ass in the studio and make me more vanilla and you know what else my advertising box wants you to do that too because it's cool and it's safer for me to sell things on top of vanilla so have some sprinkles of car insurance have some sprinkles of medication have some sprinkles of your favorite radio stations in your country right all these things are safer so if advertising dollars is where streaming companies are getting their money from which i which i tend to think is only a percentage of where they get their money from right i forget what they call themselves nowadays right but a big record company conglomerate right which is a bunch of subsidiaries subsidiaries if that's the right way to say it join together and they're this big conglomerate i think it's called universal music so there's like universal music warners and sony and then there's a few other people and they all have like like def jam island music all of these people rca or they're like all subsidiaries of bigger bigger conglomerates like so imagine there's a room of like six bosses who are all the heads of all of these motherfuckers right and it's like oh yeah you got sony you got rca you got def jam and then what we do is we go around and we give the the charismatic scammers their own imprints so here you 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 like you run east london right you run south london you run west london and all of you go out there and get me some young boys right and then you sign them to your little imprint and then you come to me with them right that's how record companies work but that big umbrella sets aside a certain amount of funds and allocates a certain amount of funds for every project every artist and every label right that's under their thing and within that budget a certain amount of that goes to streaming platforms too right to make sure we can get a uh, selena gomez spotlight this weekend right we can get um a weekend uh youtube extravaganza even though youtube will make money off the show itself from their advertisers they're also going to get a cut from us to make sure the show goes on right that's how it happens right now not to say that there's not a way for streaming companies to also do things like mine bits right which is which is another techie conversation we can get down into at a later date but the thing is this the reason why that bot game is so potent right and it has to be done is because what the streaming platform 
pays the distributor the distributor takes their cut and then you get your cut right well so in some cases some people pay their distributor outright yearly right and then the distributor don't touch your money from your stream streams right but anyway what most streams are worth right so here's another thing where like class actually like a i was about to say something crazy there but you have to be aware that there's classes like middle class upper class and like elite even in the music business in the movie business right so based on your class within the music industry the way you're perceived your perceived value you get paid a different uh, like tariff to the next guy right so you and bob might have the same amount of streams but bob is on a higher tariff based on his narrative that he spun his story around him or who's funding him like so say bob's just like a a low level sign from one of like the south london subsidiaries i just explained he might get a percentage more on his tariff than you an unsigned right so let's say he's getting paid 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.4 for every stream but you will be getting paid 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1 for every stream as an independent right so i'm pretty sure michael smith clocked that and he was like oh is that the game right so i don't even want to call it outright fraud right because it, it could be but in context it's part of the industry it's part of the game right if you don't play the game by the rules you, you never win if you want to play american football you need to be on some kind of substance to be able to compete with the other athletes if you want to be mr olympia you got to take steroids right even though in the outlines it said you, you don't take no drugs right we still want you to come on stage as a giant mass monster right so you, you have to have drugs right if you even if, if it says hey this is the world stage right let's say bbc radio is the world stage and only the biggest the baddest can ever play here and sing here rap here you have to be on steroids to get on the biggest baddest stage or even be looked at as the biggest bandit even though you're majorly mediocre because of daddy warbucks which is the label all right and the bots which is the payola this is our shop this is our radio this is our people right so they buy our shit even if it's shit right that's the scam so knowing that that tariff thing in that tariff of that zero 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 point one for you as an independent that is majority advertiser bucks right and you know the advertiser bucks needs to go to the bigger share of the pie that's why you get the shit amount in the streaming platform's eyes right they've got their pie chart of look this is coming directly to us from the distributors this is coming directly to us from the advertisers this is coming directly to us from the labels right and then at the streaming companies they got their payola under the desk too right i've got artist relationships right i curate this playlist hey i'm like i'm my name's noah whatever and, and i do this show but i've also got ties in this record company i've also got ties in this streaming platform so it's all of this thing is a big conglomerate that, that works together it's all part it's all moving parts of the same machine right so the reason they would make a person like michael smith an example right we're bringing in federal cases and all that isn't because what michael smith is doing is so horrendous it's because it's affecting all of the moving parts in the big machine and the big machine's like michael stop acting on your own bro come over here with us and if michael says no then it's like all right fuck it michael we've got to make an example of you because you're 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 baiting up the way we do things but you're not doing it with us all right that's the that's the catch right so i'm sorry to tell you but the things you think are your faves the things you think are the best are all bots all right all bots right b-o-t-s n-p-c's right it's not real it's not good it's not great but hey you can like mediocre too mediocre serves a purpose right vanilla ice cream is a good base for other things <laughs> the next couple things i'm about to say they're definitely gonna fire up the old stakes and uh the witch hunt and come for your boy right but you can't stop me R always remember anyone that's willing to say the kind of shit that i'm willing to say is willing to do the kind of shit that needs to be done to stay above water right remember that so if you come for me i'll be coming back right so anyways if you just think what payola is right and then how payola translates to bots now i'm not picking on any um personalities or companies in particular even though i'm going to use your names i'm not trying to def defamate your character or damage your business right i'm just pointing out the standard business practices that may or may not be obvious to the general public right so if you look at people like we're just talking about the rap world right people like people like right and then you look at 
I don't know what what's the other what's like the pop dance world people like and uh, you know what I mean like whatever you guys listen to on BBC one and shit like that right if you just take those top DJs right and then you look at how their relationships are with the artists that they play it's a form of payola right they're allowed to appear at certain events they get certain gifts and then when they're doing an event they're doing their thing let's say bringing out a new flavor of piss vodka right he's gonna get the rapper which is under one of those subsidiaries right let's get uh let's get uh johnny from east london under james right and let's make him hold this bottle of piss flavored <laughs> fucking <laughs> vodka right for our new ad right and you know what Johnny's gonna do it because James needs the connection and Johnny needs the connection to fucking right now I'm not dissing you saying like come on you fucking know like how many gifts you get get trainers that you don't want fucking music equipment you don't need brand deals that you don't want right because it's all a form of payola right you want to get in your good book so we can get on your fucking show you want to get in your good book so we can get on your fucking show you know what I mean and then there's the other side of that as well it's like well you know we do have x or U Y on you and if you fucking don't do what you want you to do mate you know what i'm saying so you either do what you want to do or you get off there all right so that's that's how it goes right bbc fucking knows like the, the historical fuckery that goes on in the company that is the state sanctioned propaganda that is bbc is well documented right so i'm not picking on anybody i'm not dissing anybody and i apologize if it seems like i'm defaming you or speaking hate speech because i'm not i'm just using it as an example right and then the same shit i said for goes for as well or whatever fucking whatever you guys listen to <laughs> do you know what i mean right so i just use them as an example right and i won't stop there right if we go over to the americas right and we look at people like ebro in the morning and hot 97 versus like uh, the breakfast club and charlemagne's and all of those people they operate on the same thing too right relationship is a form of payola right because it grants you access to things it sways your opinion it's no it's no different to big companies lobbying politicians hey you're gonna run for mayor in our city okay you know we bring in a lot of money for this city and we have a lot of say so i i want you to just for an example i want you to make sure this bus service runs to all of the jewish neighborhoods in our town or in our borough right and you're gonna fucking do it because if you don't we're pulling our money from your campaign right that's how it works and sometimes it's not a threat it's like hey if you do it you know how about holiday on us actually it's not even a holiday me and a few friends are having a party on the fucking out somewhere and before it'd be nice for you and the missus to join us all expenses paid but it's payola all right it's the same kind of shit so um once you know that exists and it's never stopped or or even began in the 50s right shit like this don't surprise you all right it's like He's just an example. You know when we need a full guy so we can cover, like, to distract everyone from the shit we're doing? Like, let's just, let's kick him up the fucking... Let's kick him out of the flat so he just falls down while we're sneaking all the gold out of the back door. Right? Yeah, look at the dead body. Look at the dead body. We got the gold, though, right? Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of shit that's going down, right? I'll probably beep your names out anyway, just so you can't all get... Him. Well, here's a, here's a reason to take him down. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, fuck you, bro. But anyway, with all due respect, you know how the game goes. I know how the game goes, right? So I'm never going to be able to just be like, ha, yeah, this is good music. No, it's not, right? That's why I listen to old music, right? Oh, this is a good movie. Nah, no, it's not, right? This this social media influencer is important to society. Nah, nah, they're not. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what I mean, right? And as, as, as long as people can start being more honest like this, right? And just be like how we fucking are when we go to work in a van and we're like, you know, should I turn that shit off, bruv? Just put on talk radio if you're going to listen to something. You know this is bullshit. Like, I know this is bullshit. And we've heard it 30 times today. Now the fucking thing's stuck in our head. But you know what? The person singing it can't sing a lick of a fucking note. And we both know it, all right? So just be honest, all right? And then, and then no one will have to pick on my cool young history anymore. And then you'll get some more Lupes if you want that. <laughs> I'm joking. Tired of the rarefied atmosphere, which is closer to the rarefied atmosphere of fart sniffing? Would you like to have some original thoughts and some easier stool pass? Come down to Death Row Records where we choke you. <laughs> you ain't gotta be all up in the video dancing. I'm, I'm joking. Yeah. But you know where this is going, so let's go there.